But everything what I have shown you now in the last minutes, all these efforts, all these actions and developments, they were only possible to realize because of a continuously income of this high quality certified hybrid seed. And I say also that only these hybrid seeds is able to realize the next necessary yield step which everyone expects in the coming years. How we can see that? On this graph you find some examples from our breeding history, some smaller milestones. We put them in the last two years in a historical demo trial and we could observe very well this yield curve which we already know from official statistics. So we could see that the old varieties struggling with these new uh, diseases and we could also show very well that these uh, new varieties, this new generation show this one and a half percent yield growth per year in comparison to this older material. Additionally, and that is also something what I have heard here from the market, additionally, we could show also with this hybrid seed that we are able to outperform open pollinated varieties or even this farm safe seed totally. This is here official data from Poland from the last 10 years showing very well the yield difference between the open pollinated varieties and the hybrids. One in, it's in, in average, it's a half ton per hectare, this plus for hybrid seed. If we make now a small calculation, that means with the actual price is a difference of 200 euros per hectare. And uh, if I keep in mind, okay, I have to invest for the hybrids maybe 60, 70 euros per hectare. But there is still quite a lot of money left for the farmer, speaking positive for the usage of hybrid seeds. And when we go one step further, there is then the point that uh, this is not only this outperforming, there is also something which is really critical and makes me nervous that when I heard that each 10 hectare, maybe less, is open pollinated seed or farm safe seed here in Lithuania, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe that and I'm convinced that farmers using farm safe seed, they are not sitting here because here are sitting only experts. So let's imagine these farmers sitting with the other dealers in the other winter conferences. But let me explain one point. When we use this farm safe seed, we see then outside in the field the opposite effect of heterosis. We see a splitting of the seeds in the field. 50% of this farm safe seed in, in your field is then still the original seed. The other 25% is uh, the mother seed from the mother line and the other 25% is the seeds then from the father line. Keep now in mind that we have for some of the important resistance like club root, the case that only one half of the parental line is covering this resistance. So keep in mind if we take now this farm safe seed and 25% is then without protection, then we struggle a lot then in the further future and in a point of sustainability for rapeseed production in the Baltics, I can say very clear, that is a disaster. I want to use also one moment at the end of the presentation to explain a little bit more of this uh, reason of this uh, success from this new generation. We see here, for example, for these candidates like Janos, that there is this new mother line in the background with this very strong plant health from Western Europe. But what is the reason here really behind? It is the first time, ladies and gentlemen, that the mother line is covering already the turnip yellow virus resistance 
For all the other generations in our portfolio, that was not the case. And this new situation gives the chance to cross this mother line with other totally different restorers with more other additional further benefits, bringing then finally these new candidates for us. And what is then the, the impact you see on the left side on this graph? While we had really big problems in the official trials in 2018, 19 in Poland with our material, we could see here very well now that with this new generation, we made a really step forward and we are now back in the game with all the other competitors on the European rapeseed market. But breeding is going further. And there was the request also to speak about these new developments. Let's start with a first small review, okay, from where we are coming. We see here milestones of plant breeding in general. And we can see here very well that rapeseed breeding, rapeseed in total, is a very young crop in comparison to wheat or corn. If you look then further to the left, then you can see here very well that in the last 20, 30 years, more and more techniques came into the breeding and enable our breeders to make further steps. For example, this hybrid breeding, already a very old system in, in, in breeding, but then uh, this uh, um, DNA-assisted uh, breeding. So we are able now to, to check our new material in the DNA marker lab if they have all the resistance inside the, as we expected. In the past, it was necessary to check that outside in the field, which you can imagine takes a lot of time and money. But also then uh, this uh, uh, genomic selection. So we are now in a situation more and more that it's not necessary to plant everything outside in the field and to go to the field and make uh, analyses and check for different disease resistances or for the yield potential. Based on training population, based on uh, computer uh, assistance, we are able to make already uh, um, estimations based on experiences and other um, databases that we can give an, uh, already a forecast what could be the potential yield of this new generation based on breeding uh, in, uh, with, with computer support. And when uh, we look now to what is going on in Brussels, yeah, there is this uh, discussion now for these new uh, breeding techniques like CRISPR-Cas. We had at the beginning of the year uh, a decision from the EU Parliament that they uh, make an approval for these new breeding techniques after quite long discussions and also based on this uh, pressure from the market. But it's not only uh, the, the final decision, ladies and gentlemen. What we have right now is that with these uh, new techniques like CRISPR-Cas, we are able to make really targeted changes in the DNA on a level of 20 base pairs. So that is so small changes which could also happen outside in Mother Nature. And this is a new group, this NGT1 group, and this new genetics coming out from this group, they are now approved on the level of the EU Parliament. They need in future just a label on the back, but the further following uh, um, products from these uh, seeds, they don't need further labels. The NG2 group, that is still then this uh, material like uh, GMO uh, uh, material for um, uh, glyphosate resistant material like we can find on the North American market, which is still forbidden here. But the point is, future, nobody knows. It's still under a question mark. And uh, we, yeah, we see here um, now a longer way in front of us, further discussions between EU Parliament, Commission, Member States for a final, final decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of my presentation. 
And uh, this picture here behind me shows somehow a little bit the situation outside in the fields. Yes, we are struggling with the rapeseed production, but we still have everything for a bright future. Let me explain you that why. I have shown you that uh, breeding is delivering 67% of your annual yield growth. 1.1, 1.2% per year. This research paper from this agency in, in Germany, they found also out if we enable our breeders to do their job, there is a further yield potential, production potential in 2040 in the European Union of an additional 25 million tons for winter wheat or 4 million tons for rapeseed. How does that sound to you? For me, that sounds really promising, ladies and gentlemen. I have shown you, but also the consequences of this new genetics, for example, with this turnip yellow virus story. You are experts on your farm. You know your farm. So implement this new genetic, but be careful. Make adaptations and look really careful behind this of very strong marketing. Make your own decisions. We have uh, seen together this story of plant health. I showed you that we have in future more and more this healthy, robust material really selected for the conditions in outside in the practice. And I'm convinced that this will have further consequences as I explained to you, we will have later harvest dates. And last point, yeah, new genetics, these new breeding techniques, of course, that will give us uh, more solutions, necessary solutions for disease resistances or drought tolerance, ladies and gentlemen. But we have to wait here for final decision in Brussels. And at the end, I want to underline, behind all of these ideas of my presentation, there was one main message for all of you, and that is, behind each hybrid, there is one story. Find your ones. Thank you. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, one more point I have for you. One more point. Here you can see a few pictures. And that is something really exciting for me. You can see here pictures from the main dealer in Poland called Chemirol. And you can see pictures here from the main biggest supplier in the Baltics. And it's interesting that since somehow 10 years, they are offering the same strong hybrids. It started with Kuga then Dominator, and now Janosch. And my question to you is, what is the reason for that? Is it just a coincidence and just happen? Or is more behind? If you ask me, ladies and gentlemen, my opinion is that it's trust. Thank you very much. <laughs>